Welcome to this special Hoover Institution event on Taiwan and the COVID-19 pandemic, Lessons for the World, which is organized by the Hoover Project on Taiwan and the Indo-Pacific region. I would like to begin by thanking the Taipei Economic and Cultural Office in San Francisco for their support of our project, my Hoover colleague, Glenn Tiffert, who will be moderating the next session for his work in putting together our event today and in managing this Hoover project, and the staff of the Hoover Institution who have worked so hard on the logistics of this event. It is my honor to introduce our opening keynote speaker at this event, the Vice President of Taiwan, Dr. Chen Jianren. Taiwan has been quite fortunate to have as its Vice President in this public health crisis, a distinguished epidemiologist who has made significant contributions to public health and infectious disease control, as well as science and technology development. Dr. Chen is widely respected in Taiwan and internationally for his crisis management skills and leadership abilities, as well as his open-mindedness and passion for communication. He holds a Doctor of Science degree from Johns Hopkins University with expertise in epidemiology, human genetics, public health, and preventive medicine. At National Taiwan University, he has been a professor and director of the Graduate Institution of Public Health, founding director of the Graduate Institute of Epidemiology, and dean of the College of Public Health. He has also been a distinguished research fellow of the Genomics Research Center. As vice president of the Academia Sinica, he built up the Taiwan Biobank and established the National Biotechnology Research Park. During Taiwan's SARS outbreak in 2003, Dr. Chen was appointed Minister of Health. He swiftly and successfully controlled the crisis through quarantine and screening procedures. To enhance Taiwan's capabilities in public health and infectious disease control, he has played a leading role in reorganizing Taiwan's Department of Health and Centers for Disease, in establishing a national health care system for infectious diseases, and in reforming Taiwan's health insurance system. As a medical scientist, Dr. Chen has made tremendous contributions to human health promotion and disease prevention. In addition to many honors in Taiwan, he has been selected as a member of the World Academy of Sciences, a foreign associate of the US National Academy of Sciences, and a Cutter Lecturer on Preventive Medicine at Harvard University. He also received the Knowledge for the World Award from his alma mater, Johns Hopkins University. Ladies and gentlemen, the Vice President of Taiwan, Dr. Chen Jianren. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I would like to express my appreciation to the Hoover Institution and Dr. Larry Diamond in particular for organizing today's event and for inviting me to take part. Dr. Diamond is a leading scholar in the field of democracy studies and very familiar with Taiwan's transition into a vibrant democracy. I think this is the one of the reasons he organized today's event, as Taiwan's experience of fighting this global pandemic as a democratic country is well worth sharing. Having spent several years at Johns Hopkins University pursuing my Doctor of Science degree in epidemiology, I have a deep and personal connection to the United States that has profoundly influenced my professional career. In Taiwan, many public health officers and experts trained or studied in the United States. The close bonds that Taiwan and U.S. health agency and experts have long enjoyed are an important element in the Taiwan-U.S. partnership. As of April 30th, there are over 3.2 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 globally and over 220,000 deaths. Life and work have been disrupted in an unprecedented manner by this pandemic and the world's economy has taken a heavy hit. In this globalized world, Taiwan has not been spared either. However, despite our proximity to the origin of COVID-19, the disease 
has not inflicted the same damage in Taiwan as seen in China and many other countries. This is because Taiwan has been prepared for this for 17 years. We learned the hard way from the SARS outbreak in 2003. When SARS hit Taiwan, I was head of the Department of Health, now the Ministry of Health and Welfare. SARS revealed many of the flaws and inadequacies in our epidemic prevention system. After the outbreak abated, we started to rebuild the system. We reviewed and revised the Communicable Disease Control Act and other relevant regulations. During an epidemic, the government is now authorized to designate medical care institutions to function as responding hospitals or isolation hospitals. We can also implement measures to prevent hospital infection. This includes designating separate entrances and exits for inpatients, outpatients, and ER patients. We also formulated standard procedures for surveillance and reporting of communicable diseases and optimized border quarantine protocols. We strengthened our home isolation or quarantine procedures for context of confirmed cases or passengers from epidemic areas and stipulated that the relevant authorities should ensure we always have sufficient critical medical supplies at hand. Disseminating incorrect information about an outbreak is also a finable offense. And SARS made us realize that our Center for Disease Control was not as well staffed as it could have been, prompting us to recruit even more doctors specializing in infectious diseases. SARS also prompted us to establish our first multi-specialized team for epidemic prevention. We also created the Office of International Cooperation within the Department of Health. The office engages in international public health cooperation and facilitates information sharing, allowing us to better contribute to the international community. The purpose of this systemic overhaul was to achieve transparency and promote information sharing and international cooperation. This made Taiwan better prepared to cope with today's pandemic 17 years later. The three major principles underpinning our current measures for countering COVID-19 were mainly established after SARS. They are prudent action, rapid response, and early deployment. First, prudent action. It is important to monitor emerging infectious disease, especially in the region where we are located, near China. On December 31st last year, Taiwan CDC officers noted a post online with proclamation issued by the local authority in Wuhan, China, detailing a number of suspicious cases of an illness with symptoms similar to SARS. After careful deliberation, we informed the World Health Organization that patients with this illness has been isolated for treatment in Wuhan. This was sent via email through the International Health Regulation Mechanism. Second, rapid response. On December 31st, we also implemented onboard quarantine measures for all passengers flying into Taiwan from Wuhan and activated a series of other preparatory measures. Shortly thereafter, we also established a task force led by Taiwan CDC to monitor the situation and sent two experts to Wuhan to conduct on-site investigation. Third, early deployment on January 21st, the same day that our first COVID-19 patient arrived in Taiwan, our government activated the Central Epidemic Command Center, CECC, and began to implement a range of preemptive measures. This exemplifies our whole-of-government approach. We also enhanced the border control procedures to identify imported cases. All travelers entering Taiwan were screened properly. Since March 19th, 14-day home quarantine is mandatory for all passengers. Close contacts of confirmed cases are also placed under home isolation. After 14 days, all of them have to undergo another seven days of self-health management. In addition, an adequate supply of PPE has been critical. We experienced a serious shortage of N95 masks during the SARS outbreak. This time, we knew we needed to increase our production capacity for masks 
and even implement a rationing system if necessary. We can now produce more than 50 million masks a day with the plans to eventually produce the 20 million masks a day. Among all of the measures we adopted, I would like to point out a critical element of Taiwan model, transparency. From the very beginning of the pandemic, the Taiwanese government has spared no effort in ensuring that the general public has open access to COVID-19 information. The CECC has held a daily press briefing since January. During this event, the Minister of Health and Welfare and his team share the latest numbers of confirmed cases. They also explained their approach to preventing the spread of COVID-19 and related policy decisions. These briefings, in turn, generate accurate news across a broad spectrum of media outlets. By being as transparent as possible from day one, the CECC quickly established its authority and earned the trust of the public. This trust has had a stabilizing influence on society, encouraging citizens to follow government guidance and rules and making the public less vulnerable to disinformation campaigns. This has created a virtuous cycle. The more public trust that exists, the more people are willing to cooperate, raising our chances of overcoming this challenge. There is no doubt this can only happen in a democratic society where the government is held accountable and must respond to people's demand. This transparency, both in spirit and in practice, stands in sharp contrast to authoritarian China, which has tightly controlled information about COVID-19 right from the start. China has attempted to cover things up by eliminating important scientific evidence and delayed sharing information with the international community. It even silenced whistleblowers from exposing the real situation within China. This pandemic has vividly demonstrated that the major distinction between the Taiwan model and the Chinese communist model lies in transparency and honesty. The Chinese communist party's rigid system sows seeds of distrust between the government and its people. In democratic Taiwan, trust is the natural byproduct of transparency and openness. In the fight against this global pandemic, no one can or should be left behind. We can only win this battle through cross information sharing and collaboration. Taiwan once stood alone during the SARS pandemic and now excluded from World Health Organization. Yet, our painful experience told us that no country should face a pandemic alone. International cooperation is the only way to fight a global outbreak. This time around, the Taiwan model has earned worldwide recognition. We are more than happy to share our knowledge, experience, and expertise with the international community. Taiwan can help, and Taiwan is helping. Let us start with the United States as true friend and key partner. In dealing with the public health emergencies, Taiwan and the United States has long enjoyed a good working partnership. During the SARS outbreak, World Health Organization declined to send experts to Taiwan to investigate, and we were excluded from the international response mechanism. Fortunately, the United States helped Taiwan through its CDC, enhancing our capacity to deal with the situation. Turning to the COVID-19 response, in mid-March, Taiwan and the United States issued a joint statement announcing efforts to curb the disease by enhancing cooperation in several areas. One important platform has been the Taiwan-US Global Cooperation Training Framework, GCTF. Since the inception of the GCTF in 2015, Taiwan and the United States have joined hands to enhance capacity building among regional partners, helping them cope with challenges emerging across the Indo-Pacific. Public health has been a priority and we have held numerous GCTF workshops sharing expertise and best practices. Just a week ago, we jointly organized a virtual GCTF workshop on combating COVID-19 disinformation. There will be more workshops like this in the coming month. 
Other than actively sharing our experience and expertise, Taiwan has also donated face masks and medical equipment to countries around the world, including the United States, to support frontline medical workers. As of April 30th, we had donated over 3.5 million face masks to the United States and 70 million masks worldwide. We have also donated thermal imaging cameras to our diplomatic allies. Elsewhere, Taiwan's top research institute, Academia Sinica, has held video conferences with EU officers and scientific research institutions in the Czech Republic and Turkey to discuss possible collaboration. Taiwanese hospitals are also using video conferencing to share our disease prevention experience and techniques with countries that need help. In times of crisis, countries around the globe must unite and work together to overcome challenges. We will continue to help the international community by providing face masks, pharmaceuticals, and technologies. We firmly believe that in a globalized world, we will never be safe unless other countries can bring outbreak under control. For this reason, Taiwan must do its part to stop the spread of this pandemic. For the sake of global unity and international cooperation, Taiwan's participation and involvement in the World Health Organization, the world's most important public health agency, should no longer be blocked. Excluding Taiwan from the World Health Organization system not only ignores the rights and the interests of Taiwan's 23 million people, but also increases the risk of a potential gap in the global health and disease prevention network. The WHO Secretariat says it has maintained regular technical exchanges with Taiwan's health authority over the years. However, the truth is we have great difficulty in assessing technical working level meetings with WHO experts. From 2009 to 2019, we applied to attend 187 meetings, but were only invited to 57. In other words, 70% of Taiwan's requests to attend technical meetings were turned down. This lack of timely information exchange has become a hidden risk in the global public health system. Taiwan's participation should not be seen as a political issue. This is about people's life, public health, and human rights. Thanks to strong and active advocacy from such friends as the United States, like-minded countries, and our diplomatic allies, we are glad that WHO has finally reached out to us and set up means of exchanging information about COVID-19 via teleconferencing. But this is a fragmented measure and far from ideal. I believe Taiwan's participation in the World Health Assembly would help the world address COVID-19. We call on WHO to stand up for its self-declared idea of professionalism and neutrality by inviting Taiwan to attend the World Health Assembly as an observer and grant Taiwan full participation in all World Health Organization meetings, mechanisms, and activities without political preconditions. It has become clear to the world that Taiwan model in fighting the COVID-19 outbreak has been effective and that our story needs to be heard. Taiwan has responded to COVID-19 extraordinarily well. By sharing our experience, we can help the international community better prepared for the next pandemic. Nobody knows when we can put this pandemic behind us or when the next outbreak will occur. The most important thing is that all countries learn the lessons and adopt the measures in preparation for future outbreaks just as Taiwan did after SARS in 2003. We will continue to share the Taiwan model and do our best to make contributions as a responsible member of global health community. Together, we can defeat this virus, which knows no boundary and cares nothing for politics. Thank you very much. We want to thank you for joining us today at this special event of the Hoover Project on Taiwan in the Indo-Pacific region. 
I want to particularly extend our warm thanks again to the Taipei Economic and Cultural Office in San Francisco for their support of our work, to my colleague Glenn Tiffert at Hoover, and to all the staff of the Hoover Institution for their technical and logistical assistance in organizing this event. If you'd like to learn more about the work of the Hoover Project on Taiwan and the Indo-Pacific region, you can go to hoover.org or Google us, the Hoover Project on Taiwan and the Indo-Pacific region, and that will take you directly to our webpage. Thank you so much for joining us.